Morgan Taylor, and I'm from Richmond, Virginia. And I did my oral presentation on the Harlem Renaissance. Um, the Harlem Renaissance is also known as the Black Literary Renaissance, and also known as the New Negro Movement. And it was a flowering time for African Americans culturally and intellectually, and it was during the 1920s through the 1930s. Um, the Harlem Renaissance grew out of the changes that had taken place in the African American community since the abolishment of slavery. Um, another reason the Harlem Renaissance took, took place is because of the great migration of African Americans to northern cities because it was after, it was because of the segregation laws that were in place in the South. Um, the first stages of the Harlem Renaissance started in the late 1910s, I guess that's how you say that. Um, in 1917, they saw the premiere of a play called The Three Plays for a Negro Theater. And it, this play rejected the stereotypes of blackface and the menstrual shows because it was the first play that actually had black actors. Um, the Apollo Theater is another major um, theme of the Harlem Renaissance. It's the most lasting physical legacy that's still there. Um, it's opened on 125th Street on January 26, 1914. Um, it has remained a symbol for African American culture, and it still stands today. It um, it went down, not went down, but it stopped showing its shows in, in the late 1960s, and then was reopened back in the 1980s through federal and state grants. And it's now home to Showtime at the Apollo, which is the national variety show that showcases new talent. Um, a lot of famous musical acts came through the Apollo Theater. So it's pretty important. Um, the Renaissance was helped to had also had a lot of art and literature come through it, which was to help uplift the African American race and show that they were able to create the same type of art and literature that white people could. Um, it also came to represent the idea of the new Negro. Um, this new identity um, led to a greater social consci consciousness. It brought the black experience clearly within the, the collection of American cultural history, which um, basically saying that like American culture wasn't just white people anymore, it was now a mixture of white and black people, and black people were now involved and, you know, and were recognized in American culture. Um, the legacy of the Harlem Renaissance has redefined America and the view of African Americans. And this is a list of influential people. This is just a small list of the hundreds of people. But the main ones are Langston Hughes, who is a famous author. Um, W.E.D. Du Bois, he was um, a leading intellectual. We have the Apollo Theater. Um, famous musicians were Billy Holiday, Duke Ellington, Count Basie, Louis Armstrong, and Ella Fitzgerald. Any questions? Can't really see if your hands up. Questions? Did you uh, run across anything on Norma while you were researching? Um, I, was, I started with Lindy Hop was on with, when I was researching, which I thought was interesting. I heard about I heard about Norma in there, but I really didn't need to talk about her because uh, right, we're well, like in a DVD. Did you did you run across the Savoy also? No, can you say that again? In, pardon me. Can you say that again? I can hear you. Oh, the Savoy, the Savoy Ballroom. Where they yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that was. It was the Apollo and the Savoy were the two major clubs in Harlem where we were bringing entertainment and, um, and performers. 
Any other questions? Let's give one more hand.